For many of us across the country, we are getting closer and closer to that exciting time when the ice is finally out. So we need to be talking about how do we catch those early, early pre-spawn bass. Hi there, welcome to The Bass Fishing Life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers. Before the video gets going, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and punch the notification bell. We have videos uploaded three times a week on Sundays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. Thank you so much. Well, I don't know about you, but when the ice finally comes off the water, I'm so excited to get out there. The sun might be warm, maybe it's 50 degrees, 60 degrees out. But we often forget that the water can still be very, very cold. 50 degrees might be normal for it once we hit that ice out. So we need to think about how do we approach fishing the early, early pre-spawn before we start to see a lot of those fish go ahead and come up real shallow. So we're not sight fishing yet. We aren't taking a trolling motor going down the bank and seeing bass all over the place. We're still real early in that pre-spawn. So how do we approach that situation and put ourselves in a good, good place to come out with an excellent day on the water. The first thing that I like to do when I'm approaching my bass angling that time of year is I like to think about the water as a spot within a spot. So let me explain. If I'm fishing a great big huge reservoir that is just massive like a lake of the Ozarks let's say, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the area I'm going to be fishing wherever the boat ramp is in that general area and I'm going to try to pick a mini lake within that bigger lake. So I might focus on one particular cove or a bay or a creek channel. I'm trying to really narrow it down, that spot within a spot. Now these, these bays may still be several hundred yards long, but I'm not worried about the entire lake. I'm worried about one particular area and I want to start out on the main points that come into those particular coves or bays. So I'm going to focus on those points and know in my mind that somewhere between that primary point, that first point, and all the way in the back of those coves or bays, those bass are going to be staged somewhere along there. And it's my job now to go ahead and find them. Now naturally if I've got my graphs in my boat I'm probably going to idle around through there and take a look at that first. Otherwise I'm going to go ahead and start on that main point and then I'm going to fish into secondary points. Now what I mean by a secondary point are the additional points as we go towards the back of the cove. There may be your primary point then there may be 10 more small little points before you get all the way to the back all of those little points would be called secondary points. So my job as an angler is to try to figure out how far back those particular fish are on that given day. Now, as far as the types of lures I'm going to use to figure out where those fish are at, I really break it down this way as water that is 50 degrees and below, and then water that is 50 degrees and above. So if it is below 50 degrees, I'm primarily going to be searching with suspending jerk baits. If the water is above 50 degrees, I'm going to focus on those big glide baits. Now both of them, I'm probably going to still be fishing them pretty slow. Definitely the glide bait is going to be going nice and slow and nice and easy. And the jerk bait, I might rip it or twitch it a little bit quicker than I would in traditional winter fishing. But those are the two baits I'm going to focus on. Below 50, suspending jerk bait. Just above 50, I'm going to be using that big glide bait to search for those bass with the understanding that they are going to want to start to move shallow. So I'm really keying in on areas that are like 15 foot or less. Now before I get too much farther into this, probably the next thing that I need to say is if you've had some rain, a lot of rain, and you have warm water dumping in to these areas, 
that's where you want to go. So if that warm water is dumping all the way in in the back of a cove or a creek, you need to get all the way back there, definitely. The warm water will pull the fish to it. So that is the one kind of the caveat to this early, early pre-spawn fishing is if you have had rain and warm water is dumping in, that is where I would start looking every single time. Early pre-spawn, I'm a huge fan of low gear ratio reels. Definitely on the glide bait, a low gear ratio reel is a huge plus. But even on the jerk bait this time of year, I don't want to be moving that thing too terribly quickly. Now we know that it's suspending jerk baits, you move it on a slack line, but I still like to just have a low gear ratio reel on all my rods. It just helps me as an angler to slow down. If I run across some of those cold front situations, high pressure situations, I might move away from the jerk bait and the glide bait and try some more traditional, uh, your Ned rigs and shaky heads down deeper on the bottom. But constantly in the pre-spawn, I'm always thinking those fish are wanting to move up. They're wanting to go ahead and come up. So I will traditionally stick with that jerk bait and the glide bait. Um, another bait that I will use is a tight, wobbling crankbait in those early early pre-spawn situations that's a nice bait to hunt up some bass to see how far back they're using uh, those coves and those bays and with the crankbait it's not a bad idea not only to cast up to the shoreline but then back off about a cast length as well because a lot of those bigger females are going to be staging up out farther and it's going to be the smaller males that come up first so if i'm using a crankbait i will usually fish a couple casts away from the shoreline to check those areas as well now if you're lucky enough to locate some fish as you're moving through a, a, a cove or a creek arm between the primary point and other secondary points if you find fish on the third secondary point in a particular arm or branch of a lake or reservoir that is usually a repeatable pattern so you can take that pattern and move it around to other parts of the lake go ahead and skip right by that primary point and go back to that third secondary point that usually works out especially if the weather has been stable for a few days so make sure that once you locate fish you can repeat that particular location on other parts of that section of the lake that you are fishing. Well, I hope that these tips on how to catch early, early pre-spawn bass help you out. Remember, I try to keep it simple. I try to look at a spot within a spot, or you could say a lake within a lake. And most of the time, below 50, I'm going to suspending jerk bait. Just above 50, I'm going to go with a glide bait. And then the other one I will throw in there to locate fish is usually going to be a tight, wobbling crankbait of some sort, deep diving crankbait. I'll throw that in there as well. Hey, what type of experience have you had fishing early, early pre-spawn bass? Go ahead and drop it down below in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe the video if you enjoyed it. And hey, make sure you go out and encourage someone today because you never know how you might change their life for the bass fishing life. I'm your host, Steve Rogers.